I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Witchwood Crown, book one in Tad Williams' much-anticipated The Last King of Austin Ard fantasy series. I gotta tell you, if you've seen my other videos about Tad Williams, you know he's one of my favorite writers not in my top two favorite writers. I loved his Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn series. I've reviewed all those books. You can catch them on my channel. I may, might link to them later up top. Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn was a great fantasy series, one of the best ever in the history of the world. I loved every bit of it. And then he left the land of Austin Ard and the land of memory, sorrow, and thorn. Tad Williams left it to write other projects, and he left it for 30 years. And now he just got back to it a few years ago with The Witchwood Crown, book one, and The Last King of Austin Ard. I've got the hardcover there, paper back here. Book two came out a little while ago, Empire of Grass. I have that right there. And he's also got a little short novella here, um, The Heart of What Was Lost, that sort of bridges the gap between the two trilogies, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, and this trilogy, Last King of Austin Ard. If you want to read that little novella, it's cool, it's cool. I might review that someday too. But for now, let's do The Witchwood Crown, which I have anticipated. This book, this series, I had always hoped and dreamed that Tad Williams would get back to the land of Austin Ard and the land of memory, sorrow, and thorn. And I always wanted to revisit Simon and Miriam L and Joshua and see what happened to them after that trilogy ended. And Tad Williams waited a full 30 years to get to it, but he finally did. And the wait was worth it because the Witchwood Crown and the second book and the third book's coming out down the road. Well, I gotta tell you, the first two, the, these two books here are freaking awesome. Freaking awesome fantasy books. 30 years Tad William took to write between the two series and just so happens 30 years takes place within the span of these books from Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn to The Last King of Austin Ard. 30 years have passed in the lives of our heroes Simon and Miriam L. They are now king and queen of a kingdom that they have to rule and Things don't always go. I mean, yes, they were the heroes of the, of the last trilogy, but even though you're heroes of the last trilogy and even though you destroy the Dark Lord of the last trilogy, doesn't mean things in your kingdom are always going to be roses and butterflies from there on after because we find out in the Witchwood Crown at the very beginning that evil things are afoot again and things have not all gone perfectly for Simon and Miriam L in the past 30 years. So the thing starts out, the book starts out with a great little little chapter of one of our uh, Sithi, if you know what the Sithi are, they're the kind of the elf creatures in Tad Williams' universe. One of our Sithi is coming to the Hayalt to deliver some news and is ambushed and knocked unconscious and the news does not get to be del delivered. And off to the races we go with a lot of mystery and a lot of... Uh, questions that need to be answered about what's going on in the world since we last saw it. Uh, I liked revisiting this world. Like I said, I'm a huge fan of Tad Williams. I love revisiting this world that he's created. Uh, we get all of the same character. A lot of the same characters carry through. They're just older. They're 30 years older, like Simon, Miriam L. Uh, Prince Joshua, one of the mysteries we're dealing with right off the bat is lost. You know, Kind of like in uh, The Force Awakens where Luke Skywalker is lost. But we don't know where he is. So we've got to find Prince Joshua. Not only that, but his two children are missing also. His two children were named uh, Dara and Dionith. They're missing too. So there's another mystery we've got to solve. And some of our old friends like Isgrimnir are getting old and dying. Um, you know, we've got Isgrimnir, Sludig, Eolair... Binibic, Siski, you know, our trolls, Binibic and Siski are here. Tyamek is here. 
they're all getting older and they've all got children and they all got lives that have, have passed along and uh to the next generations like you know simon and miriam l had children and their children had grandchildren and one of their grandchildren who's uh integral to the story is prince morgan who's just not a very good prince in fact he's lazy he does everything that a lazy kind of drunk teenage boy would do and his grandparents don't like him that much and simon and miriam l do not like the kid that much but yet they still try to help him break free of his you know cavalier way of life and so i think that uh, one of the themes that's going to run through this next trilogy is prince morgan and you know much like simon in the first trilogy kind of was a coming of age story uh, where he had defined himself in the world. I think, you know, The Witchwood Crown and the succeeding books, and I've read this one too, and so I can see where the story's going, that Prince Morgan is going to have his kind of his own coming-of-age story, where he has to really find himself and realize that his partying ways as a rich and spoiled prince are just not suiting him very well. And, you know, we hope, hope, hope that the t character turns around and starts doing some of the right things. Uh... What's, what's the main plot and thrust of this? Well, we've got the big baddies, right? We've got the Norns. The queen of the Norns has, has come to wreak havoc on Austin Ard and enslave everyone, just like Inuleki the Storm King in the first trilogy, right? In fact, um, we've still got worshippers of Inuleki the Storm King, and they are looking for various talismans, like the Witchwood Crown, this, that, and the other, so they can defeat the mortals once and for all and take over the lands of Austin Ard. And Miriam L. and Simon and Prince Morgan and all of our heroes have to fight against this, you know, invading sort of horde of Norns that is going to descend upon them and create all sorts of death, havoc, and savagery. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's, and there's side characters too, which I really enjoyed, like Toja and Nerezu, who are on a quest for the very bones of Inuleki. And we've got um, Jarnolf, who's on a quest for the, a thing called the Witchwood Crown, a talisman that should help the bad people uh, destroy the mortals, you know? That's where we get the title, Witchwood Crown. There's, uh, you know, that's about all I want to say. I mean, there's also uh, Unver the Tribesman. Unver the Tribesman is very important. He's sort of a bastard child tribesman, you know, on the, in the Thrithings plane with the horsemen, and he's uh, trying to find his own way in the tribes. And, uh, you know, I gotta say, you know, Joshua, Joshua is missing, so that's a huge mystery. I like the fact that Tad Williams relies more on mystical lore and mystery to drive his plots rather than, you know, over-the-top fancy magic spells and, and, and just intricate magic systems. Uh, I like the fact that these books are so grounded in reality that, you know, we're not dealing with high magic here. We're doing, dealing with epic fantasy. We're dealing with medieval fantasy, horses and horse lords, castles and knights. And that's about as magical as things get Although, as you know, if you've read Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, there's an undertone of like pagan witchcraft circling and swirling underneath the entire plot. And you know, at some point, the tension's building and all of that, all of that pagan magic is going to break in an epic way. And you know that that's boiling up to a head and all these you know, magic talismans that they're searching for and trying to find and ancient bones and different and the lost Sithi and Joshua and his, Joshua and his kids being lost. All of these things are about to, they're building up slowly and slowly and slowly and Tad Williams does a great slow build with all of this tension and, you know, I can't wait for book three till it all sort of spills out and we find out the answer to all the mysteries that he's built up in book one, The Witchwood Crown, and also Empire of Grass, which I will be reviewing soon. I've read this one three times. I've read this one twice, and I'm going to read it a third time for my review series because I can't wait for book three to come out, which is probably going to come out in a year or two. I love, I mean, Matt, let's face it, Tad Williams is a master storyteller. 
I'm not going to get any more into the plot than I've already told you because I do spoiler-free reviews on this channel. And I like people to get into a book and discover all the plot twists and plot points themselves. Because that's the exciting part. I just like to give a general basic overview and a general feeling of what I think of the story. Now, as a, I'm a writer, and let me give you some writing advice here. If you want to study how to write epic fantasy, there is no better author to study than Tad Williams. And start with Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. Start with the Dragon Bone Chair, work your way through Stone of Farewell and to Green Angel Tower, and then pick up this second trilogy in the series, Witchwood Crown and Empire of Grass. You will learn more about how to write fantasy by studying what Tad Williams does than any other author. And I guarantee you this is the truth because George R. R. Martin says the same thing, that he was inspired most by Tad Williams when he wrote Game of Thrones. I mean, Tad Williams is a master storyteller. He's a master at the writing craft at just how to spin words how to place words on a page that look beautiful together on the page how to place words on a page that sound beautiful rolling off the tongue he does it all with such precision and grace and perfection it's amazing you have to have to read tad williams if you want to be a serious fantasy writer and that's not arguable Hey, let's uh, let's rate, rate the book, which the Witchwood Crown by Tad Williams. I give this, um, like I said, I anticipated the release of this series for thirty years, and it finally came out, and I was jacked to read it, and it did not disappoint. Now, was I en as enthralled with this entry as I was with the? previous three 30 years ago that I read when I was a much younger person? No, those have a lot of nostalgia for me that pushed them into the 10, you know, I rate things one through 10, that, that pushed those into the 10 plus category, right? But it was a, certainly a pleasure to revisit Austin R and to go back to meeting Simon and Miriam L again. And I gotta tell you, I'm gonna give this 9.5 out of 10. Almost perfection, almost perfection. It is filled with, now if you thought that Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn started a little slow, that's one of the criti critiques that Tad Williams gets with The Dragon Bone Chair, which is the first fantasy novel he wrote, is that it starts off the first couple of pages a little slow. I disagree, however, a lot of people have that opinion. opinion. That is not the case with The Witchwood Crown. It starts off with the bang and the action and intrigue are into the story from the get-go and it never lets up. 9.5 out of 10, Witchwood Crown, Tad Williams,